All right, students, we're back again with our next lesson. Oops, it is. Okay, so we're moving on with our proportions, and now we're going to be focusing on word problems. And they're really not bad as long as you are careful when you are setting them up. Um, so proportions can be used as a word problems in which there is a constant rate. So that's kind of the whole thing that we've been talking about. Um, with our proportionality last year, I talked about constant proportionality. And so that's a constant rate that we're talking about. It's very important to stay consistent, which means you set your proportion, your ratios up the exact same way. So here we have miles to hours, and then we have hours to miles. On this one, miles to hours and miles to hours. So only one of those would be correct. You'd get an answer here. This is the wrong one because you have miles on top and hours on the bottom. But in the other one, you have hours on top and miles on the bottom. That's not consistent. That's not the same. You would get an answer. This is very important. In math, when you set up a problem, you can get an answer. It's just not the right answer. So you have to be very consistent to get the correct answer. So if you put miles on top and hours on the bottom in the first, ratio, you have to put miles on top and hours on the bottom in the second ratio in order for it to be a proportion that is written correctly. All right, so we're going to look at uh, these problems. We're doing one, two, three, and four on this page, and then you have the next page full of word problems to practice yourself. All right, it says, first of all, our instructions round to the nearest tenth or cent when necessary, okay? So just for practice, the tenth, if you recall, is the first place behind the decimal. The cent, the penny, when we're talking about money, is the hundredth place. So that's uh, just a little refresher about decimal place value. Pete drove 224 miles in four hours. So we, we have miles per hour. Here's a good strategy for you. Go ahead and put miles on top here and hours on the bottom there. That's gonna help you set up your proportion correctly. All right, so we have 224, which is the miles, and we have four hours. It says, if he drives at the same rate, that's a key phrase in that problem, which is a constant rate on Sunday, how long would it take him to drive 490 miles? Okay, so now we, we're given this information. And we're asked, the question here is how long? That's the thing we don't know. So if we're gonna write a proportion here, I've gotta put my miles on the top. That's our 490 that they gave us. And we know that because that's how we started over here. And then my X is gonna represent my hours on the bottom. That's how we know we're looking for that. It says how long and hours is on the bottom right here. Once we get it set up then we can do our cross products and we're going to look at, uh, remember we put the variable on the left, so we're gonna have 224x equals, and on your calculator you can do four times 490, which I think is 1960, if I hit my calculator correctly. And then we do our inverse operations. This dividing by 224, we're getting rid of this, it divides out to be a one. And we do that on both sides. And so when you solve that on your calculator, you have X equals 8.75, which is what your calculator shows, hours. Let's go back to our instructions. Round to the nearest tenth or cent. Well, this isn't money. So now we're gonna round to the nearest tenth place. And so it's actually going to, that's approximately here, we're going to round it to 8.8 .8 hours. Always put our units there so we know what we're talking about. Not 8.8 .8 years, not 8.8 .8 hot dogs, 8.8 .8 .8 hours. All right, let's look at number two. I'm going to try and write smaller since I took out that whole space. Approximately four out of five students. Hmm in Ms. Haynes' seventh grade class have cell phones. So we have students with phones. I'm gonna put the phones on top. But now what's the bottom? Okay. We have the ones who do have phones compared to the total class. And there's five, so this would be four out of five. Four is the number who have phones. 
five is the total number of kids we're talking about. So we're gonna put that to the total, okay? So if we work on this, now we know that we have four half phones if five are in the class. The question is, if there are 365 students in the grade, the whole class, the total in the grade, that's why we put total down here so we'll know what we're talking about, then how many are gonna have a cell phone? So that means the 365, it's gonna go down here on the bottom because that's the total number of kids. How many have phones? That lets us know we don't know how many have phones. So that's the problem that we're going to be solving. So we're gonna do our inverse operations and we're going to say five, I shouldn't have chosen yellow, that's hard to see, let's do pink, let's clash. Five X equals, and four times 365 is 1,460. And then we're gonna do our inverse operations, we're gonna divide by five on both sides. And X is going to equal, if you put it in your calculator, 292 somethings. What are we talking about? Question is, how many students would have phones? And so we're talking about 400, I mean, I'm sorry, 292 students with phones. This over here, remember, is just to help us put our quantities in the right space. All right, make sure you have that copied down because I'm going to um, clear this so I can scroll up. Hopefully you got it. All right, so I'm going to go here, let's scroll up. Okay, all right, so number three. A 100 ounce jug of liquid laundry detergent can wash 64 loads. So we have ounces and we have loads of laundry. All right, so we have now 100 ounces to 64 loads. That's what they told us. And the question is how many loads could a 150 ounce jug wash? Okay, so now that we know we have 150 ounces, that's gonna go on top because that's where our ounces are. And how many loads, my X goes here because I'm looking for that and I don't know how many it is. So now we're gonna have 100 X equals 64 times 150 is 9,000. 600, we're gonna divide by 100 on both sides to isolate that variable. That divides out to be a one. And so now we have X equals 96. So 96 what? How many loads? 96 loads. All right. Okay, last one on this page. So it takes one and a fourth cups of milk, so cups of milk to make eight pancakes. So now we have, here's our ratio of milk to pancakes. So the question, oh, let's write down. So I'm gonna change, just because I like decimals more than fractions, I'm gonna change my one and one fourth to 1.25, okay? Because these are the same thing. If you have, you know how to use the um, fraction function on the calculator, it's that ABC button on there. You can use that as well. It doesn't matter. We'll get the same answer. So we have a one and a quarter cups of milk and we have eight pancakes. And so the question is how many cups of milk, that's my X because milk is on top there, are needed to make 20 pancakes. So I've got 20 down here on the bottom. Now that we have that setting it up is the hardest thing or the most it's the most important but it is the most uh, difficult thing sometimes but now that we have this we can just do our cross products and we have 8x equals and 20 times 1.25 is 25 and then we use our inverse operations this divides out to be a 1 and we have x equals and 25 divided by 8 is 3.125. Now remember our instructions round to the nearest tenth. This is a tenth spot. So we're gonna say 3.1 what? 
we're looking for cups of milk. So we say cups of milk. There we go. All right, now, if you're really up to snuff, you might recognize, hmm, if I use my fraction key on my calculator, I didn't get that. You got three and one eighth because 0 0.125 is the same as the fraction one eighth. Those are equivalent, they're the same thing. So if you put that as your answer because you use the fraction button on your calculator, you are correct. All right, so that's all we have for that. And until next time, have a lovely day.